127 of the Secunda Secunde. The topic for this lecture is bearing, and I am Dr. Kibo. So we're looking at the three vices opposed to fortitude. So we're looking at fortitude itself. Uh, so these, these vices, we're covering the last one, which is daring. So daring is also a very short one, a lot like fearlessness, which is only two articles long. Now there is a lot of similarity between fearlessness and a few distinctions. Since it's only two articles long, those aren't very big distinctions. Um, so uh, daring, what, what I think to just, you know, if anyone's using it to help in class, uh, it's be helpful to try to maybe have a discussion of what distinguishes fearlessness compared to daring. Um, you can often think of them in the same way, right? A daredevil, very daring, seems to be a fearless person. Uh, you can see how a daring person is different than a fearful person, but a daring person is often synonymous with fearless. So let's look to the Latin. You know, the, the heart of fearlessness uh, is intimidity, right? right? Uh, fear, fear is timidity, and fearlessness is intimidity in, in English. Um, now, daring is a different so it's audacia, so we're dealing with audacious is the word that's most closely connected to it. So we're, we're more, so in timidity, we don't really have that word, but timidity, the opposite, <laughs> kind of clear. But audaciousness is the willingness to take bold risks, so boldness, and it's uh, otherwise can be translated foolhardiness, foolishness, uh, and it is previously in the Prima Secunde uh, identified as one of the passions. So daring is a passion. Um, so in that way, it's distinct from fearlessness. So fearlessness is not defined as a passion. Um, so the sin of daring. So and can be a sin. Uh, if you uh, wish to act quickly before taking counsel, it is not praiseworthy but sin. So if somebody acts uh, boldly uh, after receiving a judgment, um, there's nothing wrong with acting boldly uh, in, after proper judgment has been declared. But if one has acted boldly before taking good counsel and receiving a proper judgment, then it is uh, daring. Um, you know, the uh, vigilante uh, of some kind might be daring, right? They, without ever having a trial, they are going to carry out uh, the role of executioner uh, without properly having heard the evidence or you know, had a proper judgment from a proper authority. Uh, so, vigilante is kind of a daring uh, person. Uh, acting without uh, the authority uh, to act, really, a, a daring person. Uh, by definition, daring implies an excess. Therefore, it is a sin. It's like too much food. Is too much food a bad thing? Well, by saying too much, you're already saying is an excess, right? Did I prepare too? If I said I prepared too much food, well, did I prepare the right amount of food? Well, no, because I already have said too much. <laughs> if it was the right amount, I would have said the right amount of food. By saying too much food, then I've already said it. It's, too, it's not the right amount. Uh, not enough places to sit. Well, did I have the right amount of places to sit? Well, by definition, no, because you said <laughs> that you did not have enough uh, seats. So, Kind of definitionally, daring is too much, right? It's too bold. Uh, if it were the proper amount, it would be fortitude. Right? It would act, somebody acted boldly and uh, decisively and took uh, made the right move. That would just be called fortitude, which is the virtue. Uh, if you acted so boldly that you didn't do it in the proper order, then uh, it is daring. It could be daring. Still see though, I'm not. I won't 
say that I made it perfectly clear how it's different than fearlessness, but St. Thomas also does not make it perfectly clear how it is different than fearlessness. Um, and the closest thing that comes to a good distinction between the two is in um, response to objection three in article two. I think that one's helpful. Okay. Uh, daring insofar as it denotes a vice implies an excess of caution. It's very similar to what I was concluding with with the last article. Um, by, daring is by definition too much. Uh, therefore, it is excess. Therefore, um, it is sin. In excess. Uh, the cause of, of daring is presumption, right? So this gives a little bit more insight to, um, you know, fearlessness had uh, had multiple causes, right? There was uh, there was pride uh, of soul. There was uh, ignorance. The person was fearful because they were ignorant, like the Celts, <laughs> or uh, or they just didn't have any love. They didn't care about anything. So they had nothing to lose. So they, were, they had no fear. Um, this is different. This is this is more similar to probably the second one, the, the, uh, the pride of soul, where one is presumptuous. One presumes, right? I can do this, right? I can ride my motorcycle off the launch and I can clear 100 cars and land in a safe way, right? The, the person who does that uh, in a daring way, a daredevil, they are very confident of their skills, that, that pride of soul. Right? Uh, we wouldn't necessarily call somebody who did it because they just didn't care about life. Um, we wouldn't call that person daring. Um, they could be fearless because they don't care about whether they live or die. But we don't call them daring. Daring, I think, has a sense of that pride of soul, maybe a little bit ignorant too. Um, but the ignorance would be in the pride of soul. Um, and then this last one, which sometimes say things out of order, this third objection to Article 3. Um, a person could be daring, but also a coward. <laughs> so a daring person. Uh, the daring are uh, precipitate and eager to meet danger, that fail when the danger is present, usually through fear. So a person um, can be very uh, daring until it comes down to it, right? They would be the one in the group of friends that says, let's go skydiving, let's go bungee jumping, let's go whitewater rafting, and then when it comes down to it, they check it out. So a daring person, uh, this Thomas takes from it. Aristotle's Nicomachean ethics. Um, a, a person can be both daring and, uh, and fearful. Right? So um, this is how, so how daring is often similar to fearlessness. It can also be somebody who has an excess of fear. The daring, that boldness of the passions uh, isn't as decisive because passions come and passions go, right? The person's really bold. They're going to do this. And then when it, they get to the edge of the, the cliff to jump off, it might change, right? <laughs> the emotions might change, right? Now they feel fear. Now they're not going to do it. So daring, is, again, is much more emotional versus if we can look to fearlessness where we have those uh, three distinct categories of fearlessness, a lack of love, pride of soul, or ignorance. That's fearlessness. Daring is just the, the emotion, right? The, the, the boldness of the emotion, which is in excess, but can also disappear as quickly as it comes. So that's the closest I can get to a good distinction here. And you can see how fear and fearlessness are uh, opposite sides, right? Um, Daring has no opposite side in here <laughs> because it, we're just dealing with the emotions. There's no opposite side to it. So in conclusion, uh, daring is considered a sin because definitionally it's too much. You know, if it were the right amount, we would just call it fortitude, but it's too much. Therefore, it is definitionally a sin uh, versus fear and fearlessness, which are in the proper ordering, not even a sin. Daring is always a sin. 
by definition. Uh, otherwise, we would just call it fortitude. And lastly, daring uh, is opposed to fortitude and can't not be opposed. Daring or not opposed to fortitude would be fortitude. Daring is by the way an excess of it. So that's all we have here. Next, we will move into the parts of fortitude.